Just before I actually start, I'd like to carry out a very uh, simple test. And I have five questions, and after each question, could you please raise your hand if your answer is yes. Do you recycle? Thank you. Do you vote? Thank you. Do you buy the big issue? Well done. Do you put out and bring back your wheelie bin? Rubbish container on time. Do you keep the noise down when you're returning at night? <laughs> okay, thank you for that. One of the many definitions of citizenship that I've come across that's been asked to do my presentation is the following. Citizenship is the way a person behaves towards other people. So if you've answered yes or put up your hands four or five times, then it would appear by that definition that you're on your way to being a good citizen. If, however, your, uh, your yes answer is numbered only one or perhaps even zero, then perhaps you need to see me after. <laughs> I first encountered the word citizen as a small boy when I watched an early BBC dramatisation of Charles Dickens' The Tale of Two Cities. I remember well that it seemed to be a, a word used quite considerably to describe somebody who later might be sent to the guillotine. Now having worked for local government for many years, I've learned that the expression for the chop and these days have a whole multitude of meanings. <laughs> jokes out of the way. <laughs> so, can students be good citizens? For the purpose of this seminar, and from a local government perspective, I would firstly like to define the term citizenship, as I believe that it has three different meanings. I'd also like to say that in the vernacular of local government, we're just as likely to speak of residents, or neighbours, local people, or even community, when equally meaning citizens. And of course, for local government, we are only concerned with those people local to our area. Firstly, there is the legal and political status of being a citizen. Students living in a particular town or city are citizens of that town or city. Although being a good citizen and exhibiting signs of good citizenship is far removed from the legal distinction of just being a citizen of that town or city. With citizenship come rights and responsibilities. For some citizens of Nottingham, it often appears that the latter gets forgotten. Certainly the more long-term and less transient citizens of our neighbourhoods, close to the two universities and their campuses in Nottingham, complain often and in great detail about their perceived view of this irresponsible behaviour from some of their student neighbours. And this, I'm sure, won't be any different to any other university towns or cities. Secondly, citizenship <coughs> can imply a level of involvement in public life public affairs. This can range from political office to helping out as a volunteer. Often called the third sector, volunteering is becoming increasingly important and is worth a considerable, considerable amount of money to any local economy. Opportunities range from working in a local youth club, becoming involved in neighbourhood cleanups, uh, fundraising for carnival or other student union activities, uh, working in a local charity shop, to assisting at a variety of local authority day centres. Apart from anything else, this will add something positive to any student's CV, as well as being of benefit to that student's fellow citizens. And, it's generally, and it is generally considered that people who volunteer exhibit many signs of good citizenship. Now remember, when you volunteer, you are actually giving something back to the community without taking away. But public life can also refer to participating in elections and making a difference to the outcome of local elections. Research has shown that young people in the age group 18 to 25 have the lowest level of voter participation in elections. Students are in the unusual and very lucky position of being able to vote in both their home local elections and of their university towns and cities. Yet certainly the voting figures from Nottingham tend to show that very few do so. And I would imagine that it's a similar situation in most other university towns and cities. And remember, there is a very famous quote that says, bad officials are elected by good citizens who do not vote. Thirdly, citizenship is used to refer, refer to an educational activity. And this is where I feel the universities and student unions also have a key role to play. As well as the various academic and course related lectures, I believe that the universities during this important time in a person's life can inform and support their students in their search for additions to their professional and life CVs. 
The student union support within many societies and clubs is another example where the possibly more serious issues of education and citizenship can take place alongside the fun and enjoyment of a student's social life. So yes, from a local government perspective, students can be good citizens. In fact, local government welcomes students becoming good citizens, particularly in their own local government area. Students bring wealth, skills and vibrancy to a town or city. However, it should be forgotten that thriving, sustainable and balanced communities and neighbourhoods are also vital to that same city. Now let me just ask a couple of further questions. This is aimed more at the students perhaps amongst us, so if you're not a student you have to pretend or go back to your student days. <laughs> are you a citizen of your university town or of your hometown? Do you behave in a different manner at home than you do when you're at university? And if I went back to my five original questions, would you answer differently for your university town than for your hometown? And if there were some problems, what if I swapped the possible displeasure of your neighbours for the displeasure of your parents? I hope you're seeing my point, and that is, local government has a pretty simplistic request. Being a good citizen is not just about thinking about your own lifestyle, as well as voting and volunteering, important as they are, but remembering that the majority of your neighbours will have their own definition of what is a good citizen and all it may require is some simple respect and responsibility. And I'd just like to finish and see how many of you would pass the new tests for citizenships being introduced by the current immigration minister, Phil Willis, and very central to the minister's idea of the British sense of fair play and citizenship. Again, just show of hands please, but how many of you queue? You're all good citizens. Thank you very much for listening.